In this video, we're going to go over some lighting basics. So I'm going to talk about placing lights and also adjusting different parameters for lights. So I have no lights in this scene right now. To create lights is pretty straightforward and a simple process. I'm just going to go over here to a spot where I want to create some lights. Now one method that we can use is we can use the placement browser over here on the left. We can go to the lights category and you're going to see all the different light types you can place in your scene. So I'm going to grab a point light and drag and drop it right here on the floor. Then I'll move it up and if I switch to a lit view, I can see that my light's already lighting up my scene. I'm going to delete that light. The second way we can do this is by right clicking, going to the context menu, go to the place actor menu item, and there you'll see a subcategory for lights. So I'll just place a light that way. It's pretty much the same thing. So here we have a light and it's already lighting up our scene and creating some specular reflections on the floor. And you can see that if I zoom out, there's this really big kind of a light blue grayish looking sphere. Basically, this is the attenuation radius. Anything inside of this radius will be affected by the light and lit by the light. Anything outside of it won't receive any light. So that's important to know. Now, we can control that radius pretty easily. But first let's move this light around so you can see as the wall back there gets toward the edge of that attenuation radius it becomes really dark. The closer the, the wall is to the center of the light radius the more brightly lit it's going to be. So it's, a, it's pretty straightforward. So let's look at some of the settings here for, uh, for the light. So we've got some different settings here for intensity and all this stuff. The light radius right now by default you can see the size that it is. If you want to change that, you can just scale the light down. Just like if you were scaling a static mesh. So I'm going to take off my uh, scale snapping. And you can see as I scale the light, I can actually scale that uh, attenuation radius. And if you look at the details panel, you can see the attenuation radius. Uh, changing. The, the numerical value changes as I scale the light. So if you want to change this radius you can do it either in the details panel by typing in a new number or the way I like to do it is I like to interactively just scale it inside the viewport. So next we have intensity. Intensity is pretty straightforward. This controls how bright or dim your light is. So an intensity of a thousand is going to make the light uh, dimmer than an intensity of say five thousand. So I can just see here how I could change the brightness of the light. Another pretty straightforward parameter that's uh, pretty basic and e very easy to understand. Then we have the light color. This one's pretty cool because as the name suggests you can change the color of your light. So if you want to create sort of an inside of a spaceship, maybe an alien spaceship and there's a bunch of uh, purple or blue lights or who knows what color they are if there's even any lights in an alien spaceship you have the ability to change the light color which is pretty cool. Then we have source radius and the source length and these parameters are pretty interesting. By default they're both set to zero so we don't see anything. If I take the source radius and I start to increase that radius much larger you're going to start to see this yellow looking spherical uh, helper object pop up and you'll also notice that the specular reflection of the light on the floor which happens to be a shiny floor by the way um, changes. So what does that mean? Think of the source radius almost like the surface area of the light. Think of like a light bulb. That uh, source radius, the yellow source radius, controls how big or small your light bulb is. If you've ever worked with something like mental ray or V-ray, it's basically the equivalent of an area light. So the smaller the source radius is, the smaller that highlight's going to be on the floor. If I make that source radius larger, I'm going to get a larger uh, highlight on the floor because the, the actual source is much larger. Now the source length is actually a pretty cool parameter too. You use that in conjunction with the source radius. And what that does is it elongates this radius and you can actually make it um, almost like, uh, say, like a really long uh, sort of neon light bulb. The reflection on the floor will adhere and change and update based on the source radius and the source length. So I can make these sort of really long 
neon tubes, which would be really cool for, say, like a showroom for a car or maybe a cool looking interior space for like a club or a bar or something like that, if that's the kind of game you're making. So I'll make a copy of this, move it over so you can start to see the cool looking lighting that we're starting to achieve here just by changing these two parameters. So if I want to, I can knock that source radius down. And I'll just show you a couple of examples here so we can see the differences between the lights. So on the far left, we have a really long, thin light, which gives us a very unique look to our reflections. Then over here in the middle, we'll have a completely different light. Maybe we'll make one with a larger source radius, but keep it round. And then on the right, we have a small one with a small source radius that makes it for a small little uh, point light. So there you go. You can achieve some pretty cool looking lighting just by using these parameters.